Now we all know that carp fishing can get a lot more difficult throughout the winter months. So in this video, we're gonna look at how you can use maggots in your carp fishing to get more bites when it's cold. Now it's not totally understood why maggots work so well for carp, particularly in the winter, but there's no denying that maggots as a bait throughout the winter months consistently outfish loads of other baits on all waters up and down the country. Some people think that the movement is key, that's certainly what I think about maggots, is when they're wriggling around on the bottom or they're, they're moving and writhing around, they simulate a natural food source for the carp and something that might get away if they don't go and eat it quickly. So I think that movement is definitely key. Also, of course, there's the fact that particularly red maggots look quite similar to a very natural food source for the carp, the bloodworm. Very importantly, a carp can eat a lot more maggots before it gets filled up than it can boilies or high oil and high protein pellets. So each maggot that gets eaten is another chance that you could have had a bite when the fish would have otherwise got filled up eating boilies or pellets. In the warmer weather, if you've ever tried to fish maggots on a lake which has got lots of silverfish, you'll find out that very quickly the bait is stolen from your hook and you're fishing with no bait very, very quickly. However, in the winter when it's cold, all fish slow right down and the silvers won't be so interested in stealing your maggots. You will sometimes find on some bodies of water that a maggot ball or a PVA bag of maggots is wiped out by roach, bream, tench, that sort of thing very quickly. But if your local water isn't overrun with small fish, then I'm sure you'll get away with fishing with maggots and get them through to the carp. To use maggots in your carp fishing, there's two rigs that we would advise. One is a pop-up presentation and one is a traditional bottom bait rig. We'll move on to the use of PVA and also loose feeding maggots later on in this video, but for the moment, let's look at those two rigs and how to set them up. To tie a standard bottom bait maggot rig, you'll need the following items. Some coated hook link, like this dark matter braid. Your hook of choice, we like to use a size six or size eight wide gape some silicon tubing, a maggot clip, and lastly, a baiting needle, some scissors, and a stripper tool. Some people prefer to strip the coating of braid with their teeth though, so a stripper tool is an optional extra. To start the rig, peel off about eight inches of coated braid. Then strip back approximately three inches of the coating. You can do this with your teeth or a tool like this one. Take the strip back end and tie on a maggot clip. We use a half blood knot, but you can also use a uni knot to attach the maggot clip to the braid. With the maggot clip attached, now cut and thread on a two to three millimeter section of silicon tubing. Now take your hook. You'll need to push the point through the tubing and secure it onto the hook like this. The reason for using the tubing is to ensure the wriggling ball of maggots can't wrap the hair up and around the hook link. We've used this rig with a loose hair in the past and the maggot ball has tangled up the hair but this way seems to work quite well. Now tie a knotless knot. Pass the braid through the eye of the hook towards the point. Wrap it around itself approximately six to 10 times and then pass the end through the eye again towards the hook point. Now tie a figure of eight loop knot in the end of the rig. Your rig is now complete and just needs maggots to be threaded onto the clip before fishing. Alternatively, you may like to use a popped up maggot rig. We like to use a popped up maggot rig if we're fishing over light weed or very, very soft silt. This pop-up rig ensures that the maggot are popped up away from any debris or weed on the bottom. 
To tie a popped up maggot rig, you'll need to use most of the same items as the first rig, but swap the silicon tubing for some split shot and swap the maggot clip for some buoyant foam and a needle plus some cotton thread. So now to tie the rig. Just like before, you'll take your eight inches or so of braid, stripping off the three inches at the end. But instead of tying on a maggot clip, just tie an overhand loop. Then thread on your hook and tie a knotless knot, leaving a relatively short hair. At the other end of the rig, tie a figure of eight loop knot, which is used to attach the rig to your lead setup. Break the coating of the braid just under an inch away from the hook just enough to then pinch on a split shot. Now cut a small piece of foam and use a baiting needle to thread it onto your hair. Cut a short length of cotton thread and place it through the eye of your sewing needle Push a load of maggots onto the needle. You can get away with just three or four maggots, but if there are any small fish around, I'd fill up the needle with plenty, just in case the small fish steal a few of them. Then slide the maggots off the needle and onto the thread. Now tie them off into a ball with a double overhand knot. Take the tag ends of the cotton and pass one of them through the loop on your hair rig then tie it on with a double overhand knot. Lastly, slide the foam up the hair so it sits just underneath the maggots. Trim the foam down a little and test it in the water just to ensure that the maggot ball sinks slowly. This setup ensures that the wriggly maggots can't get stuck in low-lying weeds or tangle the rig up as the foam holds them up and away from any danger. In conjunction with using maggots as a hook bait, you can also use them as loose feed to try and evoke a feeding response in the carp, get them feeding and give you more chance of catching. One option is to use a PVA bag of maggots Be careful though to use a micro mesh PVA as the larger hexagonal patterns of PVA, the holes are just a bit too big and the maggots can escape. So look for a micro mesh version. Spotting can also work well with maggots and you'll often find people baiting heavily with maggots through the winter months. When you start to bait quite heavily with maggots, it can get quite expensive. So we'll often bulk out our maggot mix with some uh, breadcrumb, some ground bait, or even crumbed up boilies. This can create a highly attractive mix that doesn't contain too many large food items so the fish don't get filled up on it. We will often put a couple of loaves of bread through a blender, make a load of breadcrumb and mix that in with the maggots to create an amazing cloud of attraction in the water. This bread and maggot combo has worked really well for us and caught us a lot of carp. When it comes to actually feeding in winter, particularly with maggots, what we would advise is a little and often feeding approach. Firstly, small fish like perch and roach will gradually work their way through your bait, particularly when you're using maggots. So if you just put out a load of bait at the beginning and leave it for days and days at a time, then it's quite likely that small silverfish will work their way through the bait and finish it off. However, if you're feeding little and often, keeping the spot topped up with bait, yeah, the small fish might eat some, but there'll always be a trickle of attraction and food in the water for when the carp turn up. Secondly, the other reason why feeding little and often works quite well in winter is that when the water is clear and the fish are quite spooky, they can actually get scared of a big bed of bait. So if you fill it in right at the beginning of your session, put in too much, the fish can actually see that big unnatural bed of bait and spook off of it. Finally, if you put in too much bait at the beginning of your session, you can't take it back out again. So try not to overfeed, and one of the best ways to do that is to simply bait with small quantities 
little and often throughout your session. So I've been speaking about the use of maggots in the winter for carp fishing, but there's no reason why you can't catch carp on maggots through spring, summer and autumn too. All I'd say is take into account how many smaller species are in the lake. So if there's lots of roach, rudd, bream, tench, eels, that sort of thing, probably stay clear of maggots. But if your lake is mostly carp, um, and you feel like you can introduce maggots without them all being eaten by other species, then definitely give them a go, because we've caught carp or maggots all through the year. They are a very effective bait. You just have to be aware uh, of the activities of small fish and whether or not they've cleared you out. Lastly, before I go, maggots can also add attraction and movement to a zig rig too. Just use a blob of superglue to attach a few to the top of your pop-up or foam hook bait. This makes for a visual and attractive hook bait when zig fishing, that little bit of movement giving yourself even more chance of getting a bite on a zig. So good luck with your fishing, definitely give maggots a try, particularly in the winter, or if you're just struggling on your local lake, not getting that many bites, give maggots a try because they can unlock some waters where previously the carp seemed almost uncatchable. Give those maggots a try and hopefully you catch a few. We'll see you guys soon.